Well, last year was a pretty exciting year um, because it was the comeback year. And I did a, I mean, I started out the year swearing. I was like, I'm not going to go back to Europe. I'm doing what I'm doing. Like, I'm just going to take it easy. I'm going to see how I feel about it. And ended up not only going back to Europe, going back to the Giro and winning it. So sort of taking me right back to where I left off, which was huge. And it was nothing I would have expected. Um, this year, I get the opportunity, this coming year in 2014, I get the opportunity to ride for the United Healthcare Momentum Sports Group, their new women's team, which is going to be really exciting because in the beginning of the year, we're getting to go and do a couple of races down in Argentina and El Salvador. So I'm getting to see new races. And so the opportunity to get to do new races, especially races that are early in their career, so races that haven't been on, around as long, gives you a great opportunity to make an even bigger impact on cycling. I raced with Lauren Tamayo last year on Exergy um, 2016, and she, of many of the people that I've ridden with, she's one of the most straight arrow, trustworthy, knows her stuff riders. And so she and her husband are sort of, came to me in partnership about starting this new team. And so there's, of people that I trust in cycling and that I'm excited to work with and that I would want to follow their vision, even though I don't necessarily know 100% what the vision is, but I trust their interests are aligned with mine enough that I'm really excited and able to trust and enjoy the ride instead of worrying about where it's going. So it's an amazing opportunity for me. Now, when you signed with the team, did you go over your 2014 schedule? Um, we did, actually. So that's exciting. And as a rider, that's pretty unusual. And it's a huge privilege that they've given me as a rider and given to all the riders on the team to have input into the schedule before all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. Now, what's it like for you right now? Two days ago, it was beautiful. You could have been out maybe in knee warmers, if that, vest, arm warmers, and now we've got a bunch of snow on the ground. What do you do when the weather is just too much to get out and train? Um, I actually was thinking about this yesterday, and I think that um, it's really good for balance, and it's good for making you not get into a rut and not get into the same training routine. So I ride my trainer, which gives me an opportunity to catch up on my reading because I'll read books on the trainer. It gives I want to hear all about the books on the trainer. All train. about the books on the trainer. <laughs> this is one of my um, time-honed training techniques, and I haven't actually been able to and get... Number one, how do you keep from sweating on the pages? Well, sometimes you sweat on the pages, which is why if you're borrowing the book or if you've got a library book, it's a pretty good idea the pages, will, the pages will dry if you sweat on them. But um, what won't dry is if you, if you like make a little sweat line on your bars and then you put the spine on it and the spines run back and forth, you can do some damage there. So sometimes it's a good idea to cover the spine of the book. Now you really like reading series. I mean, you're really into reading books on your trainer. You know, you want to make sure that you have something exciting to get you on the bike. So if I'm not going to be able to go out and ride in the sun, I was saying earlier, I've just started reading Game of Thrones, and I'm starting at the beginning of the series. And the rule is that you're only allowed to, allowed to read the book while you're on the trainer. And so if I want to find out what happens next in Game of Thrones, it's, we're going to have to get another snowstorm. So that can't all be bad. Now, does that keep you from going out on the road on a, on a nice day? It does. It, on a nice day, no. Because <laughs> then I'll just go up and down the okay. hills again. And we got a couple of the hills back, so I'm set. How'd you get to be such a fantastic climber? Um, well, it's possible it goes back. My parents, um, you're up here in Boulder, and my parents live below Chautauqua Park. And for the people not familiar with that area, there's not a climbing, bike ride climbing hill, but for a kid riding their bike home from school, there's a fairly sizable hill up there. So I maybe I grew up riding my bike home from school and from swim practice up this stupid hill. Um, every single day with my older brother who wasn't terribly merciful about waiting for me. Um, but I think it also comes down to, it's in your blood and it's in when you love. And I love going up the mountains and I love being in the mountains and it suits me for whatever reason. I'd love to go back to your childhood. You grew up here, any other sports you were interested in or um, always attracted to bike racing? Well, I actually didn't start bike racing until I was in college. So I was a swimmer the whole time I was growing up. I swam at Rally Sport Athletic Club um, here in Boulder. Um, Grant Holicky was my coach. Um, and they're all still there, Rally Sport's still there. Grant's still coaching the same team, um, which is really cool. Um, but I didn't start cycling until I went away to college, until I left Boulder, actually.
Now I look at you, you just don't strike me as a swimmer. I mean, you are just ripped thin. <laughs> well, there was, a, um, there was a phase in high school when I started out growing all of my shirts because my shoulders were getting too broad. So it took me about two years of cycling to start looking like a cyclist. Um, and now I unfortunately have lost some of my attributes as a swimmer, but I actually think that that's something that's interesting about sports is how much you can sort of shape your body and how much with intention and with training you can actually see physical changes depending on what someone's doing, that it's not fixed. And I think that's really fascinating, actually. Now, a lot of top triathletes had swimming backgrounds, became good on the bike. Any interest down the road? In well, I've, <laughs> I believe I told someone earlier this year, I spent, um, when I quit cycling, I decided I was going to do triathlons. And at the time, I had an injured Achilles, which meant that I couldn't run. So I was the triathlete who couldn't run. Um, and then I ended up starting last year saying I was going to do triathlon and cycling. And I did one triathlon and then sort of got sucked back into cycling and ended up going to the Giro and winning the Giro and getting to go to Worlds and like ended up right back where I was in cycling. So someday I would love to do triathlon, but for now I call myself in line with the little boy who cried wolf. I'm the cyclist who cried triathlon because I keep claiming I'm going to do it, but I haven't actually done it yet.